While there is water stress everywhere, Sub-Saharan Africa has experienced the greatest amount of it. As a basic human need, it is rather unfortunate that clean water is still unavailable to 11% of the world's population. According to Mark Giordano, a specialist for the International Water Management Institute in Colombo and Sri Lanka, Southern Africa, and Northern Sub-Saharan Africa suffer the most, especially the strip across the continent along the north of the Sahel region in West Africa. As a matter of fact, only 61% of people in Sub-Saharan Africa have access to a source of safe water. So, the idea that water can be found in the Sahara, one of the most hostile regions on the African continent, and the entire planet, sounds impossible and far-fetched. Yet, a string of recent occurrences has brought to light some of the most fascinating water harvesting techniques that have proved feasible in the Moroccan Sahara Desert. Join us in our video today as we examine how a German water foundation has produced water in the Sahara Desert using an amazing and practical technology. Honestly, you won't believe what you see. Stick with us till the end. And don't forget to leave a comment, give the video a like, and subscribe for more exciting future videos. The Sahara is frequently portrayed as a classic desert landscape, scorched by the sun and dotted with hidden oases and sand dunes accumulated over time. It is nearly the size of the United States and encompasses one-third of the African continent. It has one of the world's harshest ecosystems and one of the driest climates, covering 3.6 million square miles. For years, the region has experienced an increase in drought, which has caused the desert to spread further and further and the groundwater level to steadily decline. So as the Sahara Desert moves south, finding water becomes increasingly important to reduce the strain on local community tensions. According to surveys, 60% of people lack access to running water, and the water they do have may not necessarily be fit for human consumption. As people must travel great distances every day to purchase municipal well water, this situation grows increasingly frustrating. Additionally, a lack of access to clean water has hampered children's education while also affecting the hygiene and health of children in rural communities. Studies have been requested in an effort to identify workable solutions to the region's pervasive water scarcity. But over the past few years, some incredibly creative organizations have explored unique alternatives. The most intriguing one, though, would use the biggest water harvesting system ever created to supply thousands of people in 16 isolated villages with safe drinking water. The concept of fog harvesting was developed in South America in the 1980s, and there are currently active projects in Chile, Peru, Ghana, Eritrea, South Africa, and California, among other nations. It took 10 years to bring it to Morocco, and after four years of testing, the project was officially launched in 2015 on World Water Day. The established Water Foundation had been investigating the use of fog collectors to exploit the abundant supply of water in the desert using a method known as cloud fisher. The cloud fisher net in Morocco is the world's largest fog harvesting project. The innovative technology was developed by volunteer engineer Peter Trotwein of the German Water Foundation to mimic how a spider's web naturally receives dewy droplets from the mist. The cloud fisher is built from tiny triangles that are encased in highly durable plastic grids. The nets are suspended vertically in the mountains so that the wind naturally blows fog into them. The mesh of the net collects water droplets, which fall into a trough below and eventually into a reservoir where the drinking water is collected. The cloud fisher was designed with inspiration from nature and is based on the adage that the tree that bends to the wind is the one that survives. In order to mitigate the effects of wind forces on the nets and lower the likelihood of breakage, rubber expanders are used to hold the nets in place. Even the collecting trough moves with the movement of the net in the wind to prevent any resulting water loss. It has been determined that every part of cloud fisher, including the posts, steel cables, anchors, screws, and expanders, as well as the concrete foundations, can withstand winds of up to 120 km per hour. Since January 2012, 
Peter Trotwain has been putting a lot of effort into developing fog collectors. He has a degree in industrial design and has been engaged in the industries of water treatment, consumer electronics, medical technology, and transportation design since 1989. Eco owns the company's Ergon 3 design and Qualform GmbH and is actively involved in the design of water dispensers through these companies. In addition to this, Peter founded Aqualanus GmbH for marketing Cloudfisher commercially. With the aid of Dar Sai Mad, a women-led NGO in Morocco, Tropwing, who has long studied the science of drawing drinking water from atmospheric vapor, put his Cloudfisher project into action in Morocco. On one of Morocco's driest mountains, Mount Bout Mesquida, the project was subsequently tested for two years. Over the course of the two years, Various net structures were tested for their water yield, with monofilaments proving to be the most successful. The project on Mount Bout Mesquida is situated close to the coastal town of Saidi Ifni in the anti-Atlas Mountains at Bamrang region. The majority of the population consists of Berber communities, particularly women, children, and the elderly. This is so because, for most of the time, the men are frequently gone for extended periods in search of employment in the towns. There have been concerns that drought has become a greater threat to the area in recent years, with the desert spreading and the water table steadily declining. However, the clouds and fog that surround Mount Bout Mesquita continue to produce a significant amount of atmospheric water vapor. In that case, the cloudfisher which is now the biggest fog harvesting facility in the world, with 31 collectors totaling 54 square meters installed, incorporates fog water harvesting by using large pieces of vertical mesh netting to induce fat droplets to flow down towards the trout below. Through the process of condensation, dew is formed when atmospheric water vapor condenses on cold surfaces and condenses into droplets of liquid water. This fascinating technique is made even more impressive given the fact that one collector can collect 0.5 liters of water in 22 seconds. What's more, the cutting edge fog collector requires no energy and is easy to install and maintain. Even more intriguing is that food safe materials were used throughout and that the cloudfisher can deliver high quality drinking water that complies with WHO's drinking water standards to hundreds of thousands of people. Because of the fog collectors, up to 18 liters of water are always available per day, and it is up to the family to decide what to do with the water that is not required for domestic purposes. On an annual basis, the fog nets harvest 22 liters per square meter. So with 31 cloudfishers, that works out to 37,092 liters per fog day. This means that the 16 villages are roughly equivalent. However, if you want to use more than a specified amount for large agriculture, you must pay a fee. This fee is used to support the water foundation. Due to the abundance of water produced by the cloudfisher technique, which can help with effective irrigation, people can grow modest amounts of fruit and vegetables. Girls in the villages no longer have to go through the back-breaking chore of journeying long distances to fetch water from valley wells. Additionally, drinking water is supplied to a school and 16 villages in the surrounding valleys of Bout Mesqueda. This system was implemented in a region of Tanzania by the German Water Foundation to help 14 schools with about 4,000 students in the Babadi region who have no access to the public water system. The majority of the families of the students depend on subsistence farming, so teenagers frequently miss class because they must travel long hours to bring water to school. Upon project completion, 14 cloudfisher aggregators will be installed. Ultimately, the mist collector serves as an illustration of integrated water resource management, in which water is seen as both a vital resource for the ecosystem and a positive factor in social and economic development. The long-term objective of the project is to assist disadvantaged children and teenagers in 14 schools spread out across Tanzania's high plateau in the Kamiu region, improve their living and health conditions. Additionally, 
Because young people are the most effective change agents, they will educate their families about the importance of water as a resource for safe drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene. That sums up our video for today. If you were fascinated with this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks at the Ethiopian scientist whose quest is to find water on the moon. Be sure to leave a comment, give the video a like, and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos.